All right, so let's get started. So here, as I said, that first we're gonna talk about a little bit uh, about the storage service class and user store. First, we'll take a look at this class. So let's go ahead and look at this. Now, this class first, uh, it's also a controller, even though we see that it extends GetX service instead of GetX controller, but it's still a GetX uh, controller, actually, kind of controller. Now, the difference between GetX service and GetX class is that GetX, uh, sorry, GetX controller. So GetX controller uh, is get called every time you go to a new page that instance get initialized. If you leave the page, that instance gets removed. But with GetX service, well, this gets initialized as your app boots up or you install the app or uh, your app is res restarted and it stays in the memory all the time regardless which page or which route you navigate to it stays there all the time but getx controller on the other hand it gets removed if you go to from one page to another page and those pages if they have different controllers so once you leave the page the controllers get removed and when you come to the page again the controllers get initialized and so the values also get initialized like that so yeah that's the basic difference between getx service and getx controller you have to know now this class name is a storage service which extends getx service and we want it to be in the memory all the time now here there's a first line where we see that getx service get to get find. Now this is a static method that we created and it returns an instance of this class itself. So in future, if we want to access these properties, these methods from other classes, we can just simply use storage service uh, storage service dot two and whatever the method we want to call okay and we'd be able to call them just like that and we'll see that that how to work with this actually and inside this we have shared preferences and this where using this one actually we want to store memory store our data in the apps memory as long as the app is installed so the data would be saved in shared preferences so with the shared preferences, we create memory space, which stays alive. I wouldn't say stays alive. It's uh, a dedicated memory in the app, as long as app is installed. But of course, your app is removed, shared preference data gets removed as well. Now here we created an init method. An init method actually creates a um, shared preference instance, and we call it prefs, as you can see. Now, this perhaps would keep the reference of all the value or data that we store in our app. Now, once again, shared preference saves data in the app locally in a dedicated memory. In this memory, you can save data and get data back. With the shared preference, you store data as a string. And when you get the data back, actually, you also get the data as a string now in this method we are going to create an instance and we refer it and we save it in this variable and using this later on from other classes we'd be able to access shared preference and save our data now when you save data actually it returns a boolean most of the time it is true and it should be true if you're able to save the data if you are not able to save the data, actually it returns false. So every time you save data, that's how it works. So now here we created some variables. So this method is, I mean, here we created some methods. And this method is for saving or storing string value. And this method is for saving bool variables or booleans. And this method is for saving list. Now, there's a difference between setting string and setting list. 
with setting string you just simply call the set string method which directly comes from shared preference itself with set list you have to call set string list but of course you have to have a list passed down to this method now on the other hand if you want to retrieve your data in general you would call like get string or get list or get bool like this over here now over here we check if we have value so if we want to get the value you have to send the key in general key is a string you have to pass to it and if you have the key and for that key if there is a value will return the value otherwise it will return empty string now the same is for bool so everything is stored in shared preference using key actually key value format so all the keys are string you have to remember and if you, if you see carefully over here that these are all strings over here as you can see we pass string as we set values actually we pass string and value we set values actually we pass key and value now the keys are always string as you can see over here including the methods down there but the values itself they could be string or boolean or a list as you can see from here now over here as you can see if we want to retrieve the data we we just have to send the keys names which are strings it can't have the same string and store different values in different times each string key has to be unique and they would store value for you and eventually you can also remove values for a certain key from the memory so that's what you or we do over here so the whole class over here all it does is saves data in the memory as it saves save it as string or list of string and as we save during that time we have to send a key and value the key is a string values could be any kind of value and as you retrieve data the data's for that, those data, we have to pass down string as key. For that key, we'll get the values. And if we don't have the values, actually, we can set some default values, as you can see over here. So that's pretty much all about this class. Now, what does a key look like, actually? We'll see it very soon. And where to see that thing? Actually, over here now as you can see we also have uh use a store over here so let's go ahead and take a look this class so one thing i have to tell you that the storage class that we created we have to use it from other classes yes you can't use it on its own it has to be called from other classes like this methods as you can see over here different kind of methods they all have to be called from other classes and we have a class for that and our class name is user.dart now if you have a controller using getx on init method is the first method that gets called in its life cycle so over here you can do a lot of initialization and checking now over here actually we see if our user has any token or not if there is a user and there is a token we want to save it in this variable so that later we can use it or save it or work with it now earlier i said that storage service this one if you want to access the properties all you have to do simply call storage service class and then dot two and then dot method so in our case we want to see if this user has any kind of value or not stored in our app so we pass this key now the key itself is actually saved in a special class I don't a special class actually it's a file storage.dart so as you can see here we created some strings and 
each of the string actually has an string and these are the actual string that gets saved and for each of this string we will save value in the memory okay but in the app itself we refer them using this string and internally they would be used like this using this names and for each of this key these are called keys will store values okay and uh, each string or key would hold just one kind of value and unique one but of course those values could be replaced by new values for this keys all right okay now of course that's how you send a key and then from shared preference we'll try to look for like this so as you see over here we call this method get string and we send a key and for that key we'll see if we have value or not now preps dot get string it would do the job internally if there is a value it would show us the value no value then we return an empty string that's how it works